We all have this from time to time. You're practicing a song, you're playing a solo, and then there's just one spot where you can't really find something that really works. It's not that you can't play that spot, you know the chord and the scale and all the things, but at the same time you're looking for some new material, some new inspiration, something that will really work with the rest of your solo. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So I'm gonna go over some tips that are gonna help you get more into the song, get deeper into the harmony, and also just find some new material that works really well in a solo. And maybe one of the tips is kind of the opposite of what you're looking for. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. So this is about playing a song, and you know how to play the song, but there's just this one place where all the things that you normally play just doesn't fit with the rest and it doesn't work in this context. So you need to look for a new approach, maybe some completely different material, and how do you develop that for that one place? A lot of this is more about how we're thinking about the song, how we're thinking about the solo and the different phrases, and really developing and opening up that so that we can actually access some of the things that we already know. And the first few tips are probably things that you already have heard, and at the same time, it's also things that we mostly neglect, and if you actually try this out, you will be amazed at how powerful it is. And then the later tips are a little bit more about really developing your skills as an improviser, both in terms of how you connect phrases, but also a more systematic way to just check what can I actually play on a chord like this and how do I use that and can I actually go over developing new material in a little bit more of a systematic way. I'm of course really curious if you have a favorite in one of these approaches or if you have something that I left out that also works really well, then share that and leave a comment on this video. For most jazz songs, and especially for songs like jazz standards, then the most important part of the whole thing is the melody. The melody stays constant, but at the same time the chords will change and there are different ways of playing it. You can put all sorts of harmony under it and reharmonize it, but the melody will always stay the same. And that means that the melody is a strong thing to use. If you have a spot in a solo where you don't really know what to play, play the melody. Start with that, because if you're playing the melody, it's gonna help you hear the harmony and it's also gonna give you something to work from. So first time you just play the melody, maybe the next chorus or the next time, you can play a variation on that melody. Or maybe it's just gonna help you hear the harmony better and in that way open up what is there and what you can play there. To me, this is a really obvious thing to do. If you don't know what to play, you can just play the chord that's supposed to be there. That will work, it always sounds good. And it's also gonna help you hear what the harmony sounds like there. Maybe you get an idea about where it's coming from, from the previous chord, and you can use that. You can also just use the chord voicing as a place to start for a melodic idea later. Now you heard what the voicing sounds like, then you can turn that into an arpeggio. And again, this is so much more about really connecting to the song, hearing the harmony, getting the basics down, and doing that will help you come up with ideas. Don't just play something, sit there. So this is a great quote from Jim Hall, and I think it really illustrates a lot of the problems when we're playing something that we don't hear. The thing is that there's nothing wrong with leaving space in a solo. You can actually create tension by leaving space. So you can make your solo more interesting by not playing. So if there is a place where you don't know what to play, not playing, if you have the control to not playing, is actually something that's a really powerful thing to do. So that's one good reason to do it. Another thing is also that if you leave space in a solo, then you also have time to listen to what is happening in the band and you can play off of that. Interacting with the rest of the band is also always a good idea and always something that's adding to your solo. The third thing that also really makes sense here is that if you don't play anything, if you can have, again, if you have the control to stop playing, then you also have time to listen for what you might hear here. A lot of the time when we're just playing and we're playing something we're not hearing, but we're just sort of playing something because we feel like we're supposed to playing something, or that's how we practice, then we're getting in our own way and not giving ourselves the room to really listen for what we might play and what might fit. And if you do that, you probably sound better. 
This is about connecting the different phrases that you have in a solo. So if there's a place where you can't really play something that works, then that's probably because it doesn't fit with what you just played. And I think the mark of any good improviser is that they're listening to what is happening in the band, but also what they're playing themselves. So they're essentially just listening to the music and then using that to sort of come up with a logical response or a logical continuation of that. And we can look at this sort of in an abstract way where we're just looking at different types of phrases where you're reacting to what you just played. And then you can also look at it as a very sort of specific way of working and practicing that's gonna help you generate new material. Let's first look at this where we're thinking more in terms of a concept. So to demonstrate how this works, let's take the first four bars of There'll Never Be Another You. Then I'll play the same phrase on the E flat major seven every time and then I'm going to play different reactions to it, just using sort of different melodic techniques. So the first one is taking the phrase and then using it as a motif. The second one is to use the motif as a call and then try to play a response on the D half diminished G7. Finally, I think it's also important that you sometimes don't try to continue and really try to start something else just to break the pattern and that would be something like this. A more specific way to look at this could be if we take the first four bars of Bill Evans very early. So the chords would be C major 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7 to A flat 7. And something that I would very often play on a C major 7 would be an E minor 7 arpeggio. So. And then I can try and move this idea up to the B flat 7, that would probably be like F minor 7. And then of course on the E flat I can actually, actually just move that up to a G minor 7. And then maybe just end on an A flat 7. And then I have this sort of complete alternative chord progression that I can play over and this melody that's just gonna help me create material that flows and even if these chord changes were causing me problems, then I took something that I'm really at home with, which is the E minor seven on C major, and then I'm moving that through the progression and in that way, creating a larger context. This is actually a really simple way to fix this problem because most of the time when we're playing over calls then we're using certain structures and if you think about the different structures that you use and really also just make it into a list maybe not an actual list but then a mental list of the different types of structures then you have a list of different things that you can try out and experiment with and in that way see if you can find something that works better in the context of this song on this one chord that's causing you all the problems so just to give you an idea about how that might work if i take a short version of my list and then apply that to the D half diminished in There'll Never Be Another U. So that's essentially just a minor two five to C minor. Then I have these different things that I can use. like this to me is really taking advantage of the fact that we can think about the structures that we practice as melodies and then use that to create different sounds and I'm really curious if you have a list like this what does it look like could you share that in the comments with a list of the different things that you use when you're soloing or maybe there are things that you want to add to your list then write that as well if you want to check out a video on what I think is probably the best way to improve your skills as an improviser then check out this video where I'm discussing how to record yourself and use that as a part of your practice routine. I think it's extremely difficult to play something and focus on the music that you're playing and then at the same time also figure out how it actually sounds and how well you're doing that. So you need to record yourself but there are some things that you also want to learn about that and you want to train to get the most out of it and that's what I'm covering in that video. See you next week.